Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, we had a very exciting episode last time. We finally defeated Shard and we can claim the Borbagon system for ourselves. We can settle this relic world, um, which I think will make a fantastic science colony because yes, it has society research from jobs plus 30% engineering and physics plus 30%. Um, we can also establish um, Extraction wells, crystal mines, harvesting traps, that's, that's going to need a lot of rare resources from this world. Um, so we are going to queue up the colony ship. That is going to be the one world that we probably don't um, transform into a Gaia world. Um, second thing we need to think about doing is getting a construction ship into the system and building a starbase. Um, we need to look through our planets. It looks like we have some unemployment um, and some maybe some housing um, on our worlds that we need to take care of. And lastly, we need to think about um, we need to think about restructuring our fleet in preparations for war. Um, I am committed to going to war with the Mythfell Order, the Coalition, and the Sander and Authority. I think I want to do a liberation war um, and overthrow their their governments. Um, but it's going to be quite an undertaking, especially without allies. Um, right now, if we go to our contacts log, let's take a look at, where's our contacts? Let's take a look at our relationships with, um, with the galaxy. Looks like we have very positive relations with the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor, but we can't really easily call them into a war because they're part of a federation. So, um... That alliance, in hindsight, wasn't really worth it. Um, who else? Let's sort it by relations. The Etheron state, nah, too far away. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't think we're on good relations with these peeps. They're cordial. We can establish an embassy, but I don't think they're gonna join us in, in war or anything. Um, so we're gonna have to fight this war on our own. So we have two fleets and we have a recovered asset. And I think we are just going to need to be very smart and very cautious about the way we fight this war. Um, we need to think about choke points very seriously. I think we might, for example, secure Sysmok really well with um, a bunch of defense platforms and then fight on these two fronts. And then once we've secured these two fronts, then maybe we can fully invade the Sander and Authority and then move this fleet up to open a second prong of attack um, into this, into the Mythfell Order here. Um, so we're going to have to see how that's going to work. Um, for the time being, I've been rambling on for long enough. Let's go ahead and let's go into our situation log and let's start getting clearing through this stuff. First things first, we have purge of the shard opportunity so whenever we um kill a leviathan in this game it gives us the option to parade their corpse around um and so right now we are encouraging a parade by encouraging the celebration of this grand feat we are sure to have more opportunities to make this an event to remember or we could discourage the parade or we could reorganize the situation and unlock a planetary decision to move the parade there no um, we're going to encourage the parade on Favire. We're going to see what happens. Um, let's see, we can do a drone study. I think that'll be worth researching. Founding the galactic market. So I noticed we have all this extra influence. Um, and while we are xenophobic, um, we can't deny the benefits of hosting the galactic market on one of our planets. And I think we're just going to choose the market the planet with the highest base trade value, which is, of course, I think it's just going to be Favaria. Um, so we can go, let's see, what in the situation log, founding the galactic market, is there a time limit? Is there a time limit to galactic market nomination? Hmm. The Senate is in session for 1,113 uh, more days. So we can put this off a little bit. 
Um, for now, actually, let's just look at all our planets, okay? We have housing, we're building some more um, jobs right now, so we'll be fine on Favaria. Desadia, uh, we have one housing, one job, we can probably do with more. So, um, let's actually build a city district so we can get more building slots. And then let's build another generator district. Um, Ultan, our factory world. How are we doing on consumer goods? For the first time in a long time, we are doing phenomenally with our consumer goods. So Ultan uh, has five housing but only one available job. Let's go ahead and let's build a civilian industries here. Um, hmm. Actually, we're going to need amenities first. And right now, since we're not short on consumer goods, we're going to build the hollow theaters. And then we're going to build the civilian industries. How am I possibly out of minerals? We might actually need to build some more mining districts on some planets. Um, what can I sell? Well, since we have a surplus of this, we can sell these resources and we can buy in a whole bunch of minerals. Okay, so we're going to build hollow theaters and we're going to build civilian industries on this planet for our factory world. Um, New Favaria is a tech world. And we have our monument, we have our research labs, we have our gene clinics, um, and we have unemployment. So we don't really need any more amenities right now. So I'm going to continue building more research labs. If you're wondering why I haven't gone ahead and built the faculty of our chaos studies right now is because um, this particular building has a bonus if you build it on a relic world. And we just so happen to have a relic world that we can soon build it on. We're going to colonize um, uh, Borbagon 5, uh, where the, where Shard was guarding the Rubricator. And this is going to be the perfect place to establish our faculty of our chaos studies there. Um, so we're going to build another research labs on this planet. And... Um, Seeing as we need some more minerals, we might as well extract some minerals from this planet as well. Um, Gruner Prime. This is auto-designated as a generator world, but we don't actually want it to be a generator world. Um, Gruner Prime, I'm thinking... Hmm. Do we have any rare, res uh, rare resource deposits? Mining districts and generator districts. Maybe we could make this into a mining world. Um, I know I said I didn't actually think we needed a mining world, but it wouldn't be that bad considering the amount of planets we actually have. We just have one dedicated to giving us minerals um, so we don't fall short on our minerals. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, we get more society research from jobs, so I think we can also have a secondary uh, specialization in science, secondary to the minerals. Um, so we can go ahead and build a mining district and research labs on this planet. Fortalia, of course, is our um, agriculture world, which is also secondary um, specialization in science. We can also build moat harvesting traps on this planet, and I think we will. Um, so we have plenty of housing, we really just need jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and build two of these buildings. Uh, Level core, we're still colonizing, it's an ocean world, so we're going to need to take our decision to um, terraform it into a Gaia world. We have our quorum, our forge world, we have unemployment here. Um, it's a simple matter of building more industrial districts. Since we actually have a... Um, mining world in the works. I'm going to just build more industrial districts here. I can build moat harvesting traps on this planet as well. Okay. Um, that's going to be a good move for us, for sure. All right. Um, and Droitandir is a factory world. Um, zero jobs, so we're going to need to build uh, civilian industries. It looks like we're going to need a hollow theaters as well. And it looks like we can probably build another industrial district that'll keep that 
planet busy for the time being. Now, since we're building a mining world, I'm actually going to remove the mining district that's being constructed on this planet. We're just going to go for research labs. Um, oh, this is our mining world. Was I building a mining district on another world? Yeah, on New Favaria. I don't think we need to do that anymore. New Favaria can be really specialized in just, uh, just science. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna build a research labs and we're gonna build another city. Um, fantastic. Favaria, if we want to establish as the trade center of the world, I think we are going to build a couple of um, incoming transmission commercial zones on this planet when we get more minerals. Uh, this is going to increase the trade value for us. I think our empire is in the process of becoming less xenophobic. Um, we have established good relationships with a couple of other empires, and it's really just our neighbors that we're, we're distrustful of. Um, a second sign that I think is turning us towards becoming more xenophilic is if we look at our government, um, we have several aliens, like in prominent positions of our government. Our, our president, for example, is not um, is not a Valdarian. Uh, we, the Molinarch centra centralized commonalities want a non-aggression pact with us. Um, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Um, right now, we don't need to think about fighting them. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that. All right. We'll build commercial zones on Favaria. Gruner Prime wants an upgraded capital building. Already? I thought we just settled it recently. Yep, once we get enough minerals for that, we will go ahead and give it the order to upgrade. Alright. We're on the way to destroy this asteroid too that is um, threatening the hive mind uh, civilization on Zatar 2. Um, they're not capable enough of destroying this um, asteroid for themselves, so we're taking it into our own hands. Our space station is taking complete. some pot shots at it, and here our fleet comes. The extraction of Shard's eye was a messy process with a few false starts. Luckily, the behemoth had a lot of eyes for us to practice on. We then towed the optic to Fevnor, and something both fascinating and revolting happened. The oculus started attaching and integrating itself into the local starbase overlooking Favaria. The cause of this is unknown, but then again, much of the drake's physiology is beyond us. Ew. The eye attached itself to the starbase. The fusing is not complete yet, but our scientists believe it can be halted now if we wish to proceed with our previous plans. Um, so this will give us planet sensor range plus 10 on uh, Favaria and planet hyperlane detection range plus 10. Or we can scrape it off and we can continue our parade or we can very carefully remove it. We wouldn't want to damage it. Um, let's see. Plus 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This would actually give us decent sight, line of sight into Mythfell territory if we wanted to do this. Um, I don't think it's worth it. I think we're going to continue with the parade. Very carefully remove it. We wouldn't want to damage it. Special project complete. The drones in their tireless, endless work of extracting ever-diminishing resources from their local planetoids have made for a somewhat dull but nevertheless informative subject of study. In fact, mining networks on Favaria could stand to learn a thing or two about maximizing mineral extraction rates while conserving energy. Additionally, we have found that the drones are not completely silent. They emit signal pings, though extremely infrequently and at a wavelength hard to isolate from, back from background noise. If there's anyone left to receive these pings, maybe a mystery for another time. All right, fascinating. Are we just about destroying this asteroid? Oh yeah, we're making short, short work of that asteroid. 
All right, so because we destroyed this asteroid in close proximity to their planet, they've obviously taken notice and their um, awareness of us has increased and we've been exposed actually. Have, we have been careless, conducting operations in the Zatar system without bothering to hide our activities. Despite their modest technology level, the Ganvian civilization has taken notice of our activity. First contact is now unavoidable. Alright. We are more alike than you realize. They are under our protection. We protect pre-FTLs within our borders. Dear Favarian Republic, this is our last warning. The debt you owe Minimar Specialized Industries urgently needs to be repaid. Despite multiple attempts to resolve this matter peacefully, you have consistently failed to cooperate. If you refuse once again to agree on a repayment plan, we will have no choice but to seize your assets by any means necessary. All right, the debt collectors are back again. I had almost forgotten about them. We won't pay. Bring it on. Okay, so I guess the debt collectors are coming back again. So let's um, let's take all of our fleets. One, two, and let's move them into the Fevnor system as fastly as we can, as quickly as we can. That's not a word, fastly. And this um, hyperlane hyperlink network is gonna help us get there quickly. Hopefully, it's gonna be quickly enough. I don't know what they're coming at us with. 3.8k. I bet you our, um, our regular starbase can probably handle that. Actually, it's not really handling it very well. They're gonna destroy our poor starbase. Um, okay, so we need to think about, um, we need to think about rekitting out our fleet. So we don't need these hunter class corvettes anymore. Um, I like to put disruptors on my corvettes, but since we don't have disruptors, I think we're gonna go back to the missile class. Um, missiles are pretty decent. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to make some kill. modifications though. Can we move this transport fleet out of here? Nine days, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we retreated the transport fleet out of the way. Our military fleet will soon arrive in Fevnor. They just need to make their way to the hyper relay. Okay. So this colony ship can actually move towards the Borbagon system now. This construction ship can build mining stations here. They're gonna start bombarding our planet, aren't they? Yes, they are. Okay, good thing our military is on their way. We can level up our governor and give them righteous two. It's gonna decrease crime. We have diplomatic weight plus 10%. Now we can increase our naval capacity, which is probably going to be important for us given that we're coming into a war really quickly. Or we can finally get some of this, um, some of this ancient technology, which I think might be worth it. Um, let's see, what do web slingers actually do? Let's pick it. It does more armor penetration and armor damage, but it doesn't do well against shields. So this is primarily useful against missiles, but not against strike craft. Um, okay, uh, macro batteries are great against shields, um, but they do less armor damage. I don't know how this is different from regular kinetics. Um, ancient cavitation collapsers do really well against armor damage, and they have armor penetration, but they do less damage against shields, so it's just like a better laser. Um, okay, 29,000 though. 29,000 is a lot. I'm gonna get naval capacity first and then we're gonna start researching those technologies. Um, if you remember the Rubricator gives us a bonus 15% damage to these Archaeotech weapons. And if we go into society management, we can actually get this Archaeo Engineer's Ascension perk next, which is going to give us an additional plus 33% Archaeotech weapons damage. Um, let's take this colony ship 
let's move it to <coughs> excuse me let's move it to Borbagon and um Let's call it Forfion. Okay. So the Zoom Empire has become more militaristic. All right. We are militaristic as well. We can adopt a new tradition. And I think I'm actually going to wait and adopt psionics. Um, so we're actually going to sit on this unity for a little bit. The reason being... Our government agenda is currently working on mind over matter, which is going to give us the option to start researching psionic theory. And we have, let's see, nine more months until the agenda is ready to launch. So we're going to wait what, nine months before picking our new tradition. All right. A bright day greeted the packet, uh, the packed crowds on Favaria today as the procession carrying our proof of the destruction of the Shard traveled through the planet's cities. The parade's progress was broadcasted throughout the Empire to billions of viewers. The Eye of the Shard already seems to have become a staple of Valdari culture, inspiring artists and creators across the Favarian Republic. After finishing the world tour, the Eye of the Shard was placed in a specialized display at the center of the capital to inspire future generations to come. Alright. This is giving us a modifier on our... Uh, capital for worker pop resource output plus five percent menial drone output plus five percent authoritarian ethics attraction plus fifty percent uh oh unity gain so we gain a bunch of unity um but the authoritarian ethics attraction i don't know how i feel about that is this a permanent this is a permanent okay well i have i haven't actually checked our factions in a while do we have any other um, interests represented in the Empire? Nope, still just the three. We still just have Militarist, Xenophobe, and Egalitarian. It's pretty evenly split between them. All right, once again, we force the debt collectors to retreat from our home system. It's unlikely we've seen the last of them, but for now our people and our assets are safe. Okay, we're gonna have to eventually declare war against MSI, but we can't really do so Construction until we have a means of getting all the way over here. We don't have a gateway there's actually a gateway here. Maybe Colony it might be worth conquering Panaxala to gain access to this gateway. That would be a strategic. There's an L gate here too. We need a defensive war to claim systems though. Because I really want to declare a liberation war, not a conquest war. Oh. I guess we missed the mark to establish um, a galactic market. Oh well, the regime of Rylash have established a marketplace for trade of alien goods. All right, we missed that opportunity. That's okay. Um, let's go to fleet management. Um, if we go to ship designer, um, we're gonna keep the same destroyers. I think picket destroyers work well. Um, keeping the missiles, um, keeping the missiles is gonna be good on destroyers to complement our brawlers which are using torpedoes and really we want these missiles to be kind of overloading their um overloading their defenses so that they waste their pd destroying missiles instead of torpedoes um i think we're going to move to missile class um missile class corvettes but instead of having three missiles i am going to include a coil gun and two missiles so here's my thinking Eventually, I want to get two disruptors, which go straight through shields and straight through armor and just deal direct damage to the hull, and the coil gun to strip the shields. Um, I eventually want to replace this coil gun with an auto cannon. It's really good at just completely stripping enemy ships of all their shields. Now, we're going to have more heavy hitters um, that are going to be dealing damage to hull and armor. Um, so, we're going to call these. Swarm class corvettes. Um, and we're going to delete missiles. Those are old. We're going to delete the hunter class. We don't need those anymore. Um, and these are going to become our new staple. And we're going to upgrade them with um, disruptors and auto cannons when we get the chance. Um, for now, 
Uh, everything else about these Corvettes is looking good. Our destroyers are looking good. Um, our cruisers are looking good. Um, once we get access to, um, uh, I can't remember, like, the Swarmer missiles. I think we're going to equip the Brawlers with some Swarmer missiles as well. Um, and then our carriers are going to be firing large and medium lasers from afar. And this is going to be um, doing good damage to ships that have their shields stripped already by our Corvette Swarm. Alright, so that's our plan. Um, our hangers also do armor damage, so that's going to be good for us. Okay, seems like we have a good plan. So if we go into our fleet management, we can retrofit our hunter class for swarm class. We can retrofit our hunter class for swarm class. And everything else can remain the same. So we're going to take our fleets. We're going to move one of them down to Reganoth. We're going to move the other one to Huawei. We're going to move our recovered asset up here to Sismak. Okay, we're preparing for three-pronged war. Once they get in place, we're going to upgrade our fleets. Um, we can also think about defense platforms. Now, I know I kind of uh, tried to design a defense platform that was more all-purpose, um, but I think I'd actually like to design several different specialized defense platforms. So, for example, we can just have a hangar defense platform that's just strike craft. Um, so this is going to be a hangar class uh, defense platform. Okay. Um, and then we can have a new design for a defense platform. And this one can be, for example, um, point defense. We don't need very many of these, but basically we want to protect against torpedoes, so... And strike craft with our flak batteries. So point defense is good against torpedoes, flak battery is good against point... Uh, is good against... Uh, strike craft, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, again, we're going to go with... Um, we're going to go with one shield and two armors, because armor is slightly more effective. All right, and we're gonna call these defense platforms picket class defense platforms. Hmm. Oh, we've already have picket class um, destroyers, so let's call it picket D for defense platforms. Okay, um, still nothing we can add in there, so we're gonna go ahead and save these. These are gonna be Hanger D instead of hanger. Um, we can create another design for heavy artillery. Um, so we can do large, large. Um, and we can do, I like lasers, lasers for large. Um, we might as well use a coil gun as well because um, we don't necessarily have a means for um, targeting shields from a long distance. Um, okay, so we're going to have, this is going to be our artillery. Our artillery D de uh, class defense platform. Um, again, we're just going to go shield, shield, and armor. And so this is going to be pretty strong against most things. The hangars can deal with small ships such as corvettes. Um, and the artillery can handle large ships. And we have um, picket defense. Um, so let's actually go into Starbase and let's see defenses. But, okay, so let's build some defense platforms at Sismak when we get the chance. Okay, we can upgrade our Commissary General. We can give 
all of our ships sublight speed plus 15%. That's fantastic. Um, offense platform build speed plus 10%. Star base damage, star base hull points. That's actually not too bad considering that we're going to really rely on. Yeah, we're going to take that since we're going to start relying on our star bases more. Um, so I think we're going to get one picket. We're going to get three hangers. And we're going to get two artillery class uh, defense platforms. We're going to see where that leaves us. Our council agenda is ready. Okay, so we can choose a new council agenda and I think we're going to choose to expand the council. Um, what this does is if we go into our technology, um, we can actually research psionic theory now. So I think we're actually going to change our current focus into psionic theory because I want to get this up and going so we can unlock the psionics. Colonization in progress. Um, the psionics path. Tradition tree. Earthquake. The unstable tectonic plates of Lavalcor have just violently shifted once again. Reports on the damage of the colony are just starting to arrive. All right, that's unfortunate. Lavalcor. Speaking of which, I had almost forgotten. All right. The recent earthquake which rocked our colony on Lavalcor caused no damage and serendipitously has uncovered a batch of useful minerals. Okay, well that actually turned out pretty well. Let's take the new bowl life seeding project here. After that, we're gonna build a monument. We're gonna build a gene clinics. After, of course, we build another city. Um, all right, fantastic. Looks like we can establish a vote on a new law, Tianqi Conservation Act. You know, as much as we don't believe in international law, I think we're going to support this one. I think life needs to be preserved. We're going to oppose this one. Ban organic slave trade. We're going to support this. All right. Colonel Rapsack reporting, acting military governor of New Balderac. Ah, this is our gaseous alien buddies again. I must reg regretfully inform the galactic community of the demise of my predecessor, General Paltanak. Oh, right. His name is General Paltanak. He died. After being lured into a dastardly ambush by rebel forces, the general gave his life in the finest tradition of the service. A, a state funeral with full honors will be held at the successful conclusion of our current offensive against rebel strongholds. I thought the uh, conflict was over. I didn't know the conflict was still raging on. Okay, well, interesting. Let's go ahead and let's upgrade this fleet. We're going to reinforce this fleet. Here, we're going to choose to do likewise. We're going to upgrade the fleet. Um, and we're lacking the alloys we need to reinforce the fleet. We just need two more destroyers, though. That shouldn't Ships be too much. Upgraded. All right. How are we doing on alloys? We can buy 250 of Ships them in. Upgraded. This is the one that's going to not take too many alloys, hopefully, to reinforce. We just need two more destroyers. This one, we're going to need another 300 alloys, probably to build another cruiser. All right. I think we can swing this war. I think we're just going to have to be really cautious and really careful. First satellite. Several of the most successful hives on Zatar 2 have recently begun to send artificial satellites into orbit. After taking these first tentative steps into space, we can expect the launch of autonomous drones and eventually interplanetary expeditions. Wow. They're almost ready for space travel. Hi. They're neutral towards us. That's fine. Resource storage full, minor artifacts and influence. Yeah, not much we can do about that. Um, I say not much we can do about that. Um, there actually might be something we can do about that. If we go to one of these 
um, worlds where we don't really need to use a lot of our building slots, say on our energy world, we might consider um, resource silos. This gives us resource storage capacity plus 5,000. I hope this includes minor artifacts. We're going to find out. All right. The fleet's already at full strength. Okay, fantastic. So how are our defenses looking in this system? They're going to need at least 22,000, 23,000 more like um, to actually try and take on this system. But we can build some more defense platforms if we need. Um, I think we're just about ready to consider war. Let's move this to the border, to Unimar. Nuclear escalation on Zatar too. Tensions are brewing on Zatar 2. Nuclear war looms. If we do nothing, they will destroy themselves. We are their only hope. Hmm. So we all, we've been going with a policy of non-intervention so far. Um, but now they're threatening their own survival. Do we want to step in and finally finally exert our influence or do we wait for them to ask for our help? It's not really any of our business. You know what? They are welcome to ask for our help, but we're not going to intervene Research if they complete. don't ask for our help. It's not our place. All right. Well, they're back to the stone age. Is it a um, tomb world now? I would be really curious to know. It is a tomb world, and they're in the Stone Age. Really intriguing. All right, we unlocked plasma thrusters. We should probably upgrade all of our fleets with this. Um, we can get habitats, but actually I think we have enough planets. We don't really need habitats. I don't like micromanaging too many um, too many colonies um, so I think we're gonna be happy with the amount of planets we already have we can increase city district housing which will be good for us planetary build speed is really useless Corvette hull points uh, it's okay crystal infused plating would be nice to get but I think I'm gonna go for star fortress it's gonna make us more defensible um, so now we need to upgrade all of our ships so they have improved thrusters All right. Ships upgraded. I think we can build a couple more hangar class Ships defense platforms. Upgraded. Maybe one more artillery as well. All right. Um, let's go ahead. Let's move our fleets to the border in preparation for war. And then let's end the episode there. Um, we'll start off the next episode by declaring war on this triple alliance. And um, we'll see if this was the biggest mistake of our, <laughs> of our empire's career. I think we're ready for it though. I really do. We've got our defenses well built up. Yep. Um, let's see how we're doing on technology. We're almost towards psionics. We finished terraforming level core, which is great news. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's end the episode there. Um, I think we've had a really productive episode and I think we're, we're on the right path here. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.